Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 4. I thought this was the best episode so far this season, and I was looking forward to it um, in particular because of the director, who is Ryan Johnson. Uh, he directed the episode Fly from Season 3, which is one of my favorites. That's kind of polarizing, I think, for at least some viewers of this show. I love that episode. He's also um, directed the film Brick, which is a good film. Uh, starring Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he's got the film Looper coming out in about a th in about a month, I think. It comes out in September. So yeah, I was really looking forward to the episode. I figured we'd get a lot of style, and or just like a, I was just I just thought we'd get a great episode, just just better than usual, and that's exactly what we got. Now there were great moments of style in the episode, specifically. Just even like small shots, like like Walt taking the the hat out of the uh, the car, the Heisenberg hat, and uh, a lot of stuff was very dark. If you notice, just when Skylar came home for dinner, it was just really dark in the house. And the birthday dinner that they had, you know, they always have so many of those dinners in the you know in the daytime, or at least at the twilight hour or something like that. And in this episode, it was just at night. Uh, not to mention. Some of the more amusing stuff with Walter uh, and Walter Jr. with the cards and stuff like that and the music and all that. Uh, and I'll get to the, the pool imagery uh, later on. But the best stuff in this episode, I thought, was just the high drama. Before I get into the high drama, though, I guess I'll just start with Hank, who showed up at Lydia's office and got her to give up one of the, you know, basically the connection man, the guy that handles all the methylamine. And that was, um, it was interesting for the scene after that with Hank. It's so cool that Hank uh, noticed her shoes. Like, they looked at the shoes, and it was supposed to at first be like a joke. But Hank is so smart that, you know, they they put it in there. And just, just to, you know, basically make us re just remember how smart Hank is, which is always good. And he got the new job, which he clearly doesn't want, but he's going to take. So it's going to be interesting, I think, to see how he eventually has to come back around to dealing with with everything, because I guess he's going to take the job and then somehow just, like, derail himself to not... Not derail himself, but just somehow just back himself out of it and just completely go, like, full on again. Maybe this puts a little bit of a delay on him. I'm not so sure, but I'd, I'd rather it didn't, but we'll see with that. I can't really criticize anything like that until we see where that goes. All right, Lydia, Lydia before we get to Lydia, I just got to say I don't like Lydia. I just... You know, I don't want to really see a lot of her, and maybe we're not going to, uh, but I just, yeah, usually, you know, there are characters on the show you just really don't, I didn't really like Ted either, but um, she's just annoying, and obviously I didn't like that she tried to screw everybody over with their, her little barrel scheme, and the, I love that, that Mike wanted to deal with it right away, and that Jesse, you know, talked her down, talked to, tried to talk him down, um, but uh, I really was rooting for Mike to just go and shoot her. I really don't like her. That sounds awful, by the way. But, you know, I just really don't. Um, and from, you know, looking at next week's preview, she might not have too much left to do after next week's preview. So hopefully I get my wish. But we'll see with that. And I know Jesse... Jesse hasn't had a lot to do really yet this season. But I think, again, next week we're going to see a lot more of him. It's just... You know, he's had his moments so far through four episodes, but I think they're just biding their time, and they're just letting... Because this episode wasn't about him. It was about Walt and his family. And, yeah, Jesse's going to have his time, you know, I think starting next week for the remaining four episodes. But, uh, yeah, like I said, this one was about Walt and his family. All right, Walt turns 51. Uh, as the title of the episode, 51, his 51st birthday. So the show's been on for... You know, in the, the this time span on the show has been a year, which um, allowed for some interesting like callbacks again, which I like that they're doing this. We saw the car at the beginning of the episode, and it was reminding of the windshield and that always breaking, and uh, we had to say, say goodbye to the car. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, you know, it was supposed to be funny when Walton Jr. drove up, and it was funny with with the music and everything like that. But I thought it was kind of sad that Skyler, you know, who before, you know, we've seen that before on the show. And Skyler argued and, you know, got Walt to get him the other car. She can't do that anymore. So it was like a callback and then 
you know, basically looking at it, what it was then and what it is now kind of thing, which this episode did a lot of, basically reminding you of past things while basically telling you that was the past and this is where we've moved on to. And uh, that just continued on with the entire episode. Obviously, the moment with the bacon, um, which we saw in the, you know, the beginning of the season with him turning 52, and this year it was 51. Funny moment where Walter Jr.'s breakfast was, like, vandalized. I thought that was very funny. But, um, yeah, you know, Walt hasn't had one birthday on this show where it's going well for him. I mean, he finds out on his 50th birthday, the day after or whatever, that he has, like, cancer, and then he has this, like, huge party, which, you know, all these cameras, and he just kind of wanted to be left alone and everything like that. This season, or this year, 51, he wanted to have a huge party because he's so arrogant and because he thinks he deserves it and everything like that and he just got a minuscule you know dinner party and clearly 52 is not you know he's not having a good time when he's 52 either so that's three bad birthdays in a row i also liked at the dinner party there was um just kind of callbacks again just to the talking pillow and while while talking about just everything that had transpired over the course of the last year a funny line by marie has it been a year already walt's speech with Skyler just in the background facing, you know, the opposite direction. Um, I just thought, I mean, it was in the music playing, everything about it was just completely, like, so, like, haunting and kind of, really kind of, like, beautiful, just really, really well done because Walt's giving this speech and there's a lot of emotion in it about beating cancer and getting lucky uh, and having people there to help him out. And he seems like he's talking about, you know, Skyler and Marie and Hank but he's not. He's talking about what's happened with all his close calls with him getting killed by other drug dealers and whatnot. And just that imagery with Skylar just in the background not facing him and then just like zooming in on the, on the, on the pool and just hearing like how she was there to help him through every hold like his head and how much of everything, you know, he owes to her and she just... It's, it's almost just, it pushes her over the edge. I really thought she was going to get pushed over the edge by finding out that Marie had, you know, that, that Walt told Marie about what happened with, like, Ted. But that obviously wasn't the case. Yeah, so just, again, just to mention the whole thing with the pool, I just thought it was one of the best visuals the show's ever had on this show. Uh, the show's ever had on this show. Hmm. Well, I mean, it really was. Just her just, like, going in there and just, you know, kind of, like, floating. That pool's had a lot of shit happen to it. Um, also, the pool is like its own little friggin' like callback thing. She was even like floating in it like the, 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 the teddy bear. Um, just one more thing Walt's, you know, destroyed floating in that pool. And uh, maybe that's what the point of it was, I don't know. Um, it was, it didn't matter because it was her like kinda, not even cry for help, it was her finally getting Walt's attention. Um, just not, not a cry for help from Marie or Hank or anyone, because she can't cry for help. She knows that. She just has to figure out a way to beat him, pretty much. And that is where we get what was the best scene of the episode, one of the, probably, and the best scene so far this season, with Walt and Skylar just completely trading blows. And Skylar, you know, thinks she has this plan that she's going to be able to, you know, make up these excuses to keep the children away. And, you know, that's her priority because she can't do anything else. She thinks she has it won. She thinks she has him beat because she thinks he won't push her back. And in the old days, when she was dealing with Walt, this would have worked. But it's Walt's not there anymore. It's, um, you know, it's Heisenberg now for the proof that he's wearing the damn hat in the middle of the day instead of at work like he lied about to her in that particular scene. And, you know, he, every, you know, everything he said to her, it just felt like a, like a punch to the face, pretty much, over and over again. She tried to counter it, and he just, he just kind of, like, oh, wait, no, not going to work, stupid. You know, next one, no, that's not going to work, that's stupid. And it's just, it was just berated, it was just awful, it was really awful to see. But, and you know what, there was a funny a moment where Walt, got a little like emotional when he says you're not going to take my children and i think we kind of see the one little inkling of walt that's left is the walt that's linked to his children that's it 
not with Skylar anymore. It's just to his kids. And I thought it was a brilliant small little moment where Cranston had, you know, real emotion in the scene instead of just being kind of a bully. And, um, and it kind of proves that Walt's still in there, which kind of makes me a little happy because I, I don't like this guy. Um, fascinating, you know, love like the character, but I don't like this guy. And I really kind of want Walt back and hope somehow, some way, he's going to be humbled. We know he's going to be humbled. I hope he can come back a little bit, you know, for some kind of redemption or something like that. I don't know if they're going to go that way, but I just kind of hope so. Anyway, the scene ends with Skylar telling Walt that, you know, he's right. And there's only one thing she can do, and that's wait for his cancer to come back. And it just shows you how... You know, one year ago, on these characters' timelines, she was begging him to get treatment. And just begging him and begging him and begging him. And now, the thing that she would beg for the most in her reality is her husband's death now. You know, by the same cancer. Like, she's not asking for someone else to come and murder him. She's just hoping cancer comes back and it's, you know, natural. So she doesn't have to break bad anymore. And, uh, it was a great scene. It really was. It was... And, you know, while, while, you know, Skylar lost the scene or the argument to Walt, she had a nice, you know, that one last blow was pretty good, but she lost the, the argument. I thought Anna Gunn actually beat Cranston in the scene. It was really just, you know, and she, I, guess, I think I said last week, she holds, she's held her own with Cranston for four seasons, but he's, he's always been the one, um, at least I've always had my attention on, even when, you know, some of the, the more, the better moments of Skylar. I didn't really like Skylar that much the first couple of seasons. Um, and it's, again, it's not that I love her now, but I just, you know, I have a lot more sympathy for her now, I guess, and I just thought Anna Gunn just completely, like, you know, owned the scene. And, yeah, just best scene of the episode, one of the best scenes in the series. As far as the episode ending goes, Walt gets a watch from Jesse, comes home, says some bullshit to, you know, to Skylar about, um... You know, I, I had someone point a gun in my head, but they just gave me a gift. Like, yeah, that was bullshit there, buddy. You're just lying to yourself. You talked him out of it by lying to him. So, yeah, it was just, you know, just more bullshit. And I almost didn't even like the scene because it felt so much. It just smelt, stunk of shit, you know, pretty much. Um, but I like him putting the little clock next to the the bedspread and just hearing it tick, tick away. Because Mike said, you know, it's going to tick, tick away and, you know, the boom is coming, basically. And, yeah, we know it is. All right, that's, I guess that's, that's all I really got for, I guess that's all I really have for this one. This is a great episode, my favorite so far this season. And from what I understand, next week's episode is supposed to be just ridiculous. And I, yeah, uh, can't wait. All right, let me know what you thought, guys. Adios.